The space exploration scene is burning up as the new space race has everyone excited for more powerful rockets, treks to Mars, and everything in between. Frankly, there hasn't been an interest in space since the Cold War, but nowadays, spaceflight has been very intense. Whether it's mind-boggling new images from the James Webb, NASA's ongoing exploration and manipulation of space, or all the amazing accomplishments made by SpaceX and other private ventures, not a day passes anymore without something amazing happening in the realm of space. In fact, NASA's space launch system roared off the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center and into the record books this month. Its success earned it the title of being the most powerful rocket to ever blast into space, besting even the Saturn V rockets that produced 7.5 million pounds of thrust during the Apollo moon missions five decades ago. But we could actually see Elon Musk's in-development Starship rocket, which includes the Super Heavy booster from SpaceX, not only take the title of the most powerful rocket to make it to orbit, but also be considered as an alternative for crew and cargo launch capability. SpaceX had hoped to conduct the first orbital Starship launch as early as back in the summer of 2021, but delays in progress and regulatory approval have pushed back that timeline. And for a more pleasant surprise, NASA last month said SpaceX most recently told the agency that Starship's first orbital launch could take place as soon as early December but that's more than likely to slip into early 2023. And why is that? It's because they're behind schedule. Most recently, SpaceX has just scrubbed a crucial static fire test on B7. The increasing cadence of Raptor static fires follows a July incident that left the booster in need of repairs when SpaceX lit up all 33, resulting in a fireball on the pad. It last performed a static fire on November 14th with 14 of the engines with Musk posting to Twitter that the launch attempt could be coming up before the end of this year. Also, in the rare announcement that was shared about the Starship's launch schedule, Musk revealed that there will be one or two more static fire tests before the scheduled flight. So we've been waiting for that for over two weeks, and we've even guessed that the next static fire will fire up about 20 to 21 engines, a significant increase in the number of engines compared to the previous test. You know, since they went from 7 to 14, and now going from 14 to 21 would sound reasonable, wouldn't it? Then, finally, on November 28th, an engine testing attempt was made on Booster 7. The orbital launch mount was purged, slash chilled. Then the launch mount stopped venting, indicating that the propellant loading should be underway. However, there is still no frost on the booster. When venting of the orbital launch mount stops, that is a potential indicator of one other thing, an aborted test. But there is still a lot of time in the window if they want to recycle it. The orbital launch mount then started venting again after that. However, the outcome remains unchanged. After more than two weeks of waiting, we only received a scrub. And honestly, that's a bit sad. But either way, Booster 7's sluggish round of testing has caused the estimated target launch of Starship to be no earlier than mid-January. Some even speculate that sometime in February is more reasonable for Starship's maiden orbital flight. Hopefully, Booster 7's static fire testing can be as early as the 29th or the 30th. Either way, we hope that all goes well. Now, let's shift our attention to Starship 24. As I said in the previous update, a huge amount of scaffolding was being constructed around Starship. And now, the structure reaches almost the height of the payload bay door. And as you can see, SpaceX has removed some of the ship's heat shield tiles. According to sources, the removal is so that SpaceX can reinforce the weld lines between the vehicle's steel ring segments, which is in a rather worrying state of instability. It's also likely in response to a can crusher test we saw a few months ago. In the meantime, Starship 25 remains in the high bay, awaiting the installation of six Raptor engines and a series of shields and firewalls that will protect those engines from each other. Once fully outfitted, Ship 25 will return to the launch site for static fire testing and take Ship 24's place on suborbital pad B. Ship 24 took approximately two months to go from its last cryoproof to its first static fire, but its testing got off to a relatively rocky start, so Ship 25 could be ready sooner. Aside from that, a SpaceX Cargo Dragon spacecraft just successfully docked with the ISS on Sunday morning, delivering several tons of supplies and a second set of upgraded solar arrays 
to the orbital outpost. Carrying Dragon C211, which is the 11th Dragon 2 capsule and a new single-use Falcon upper stage, Falcon 9 Booster B-1076 lifted off for the first time from NASA's Kennedy Space Center at 2.20 p.m. EST on Saturday, November 26th. Falcon 9 performed as expected and sailed through its 159th consecutively successful launch since January of 2017. The rocket's upper stage reached orbit and Booster B-1076 touched down on drone ship. Just read the instructions around 9 minutes after liftoff. Cargo Dragon deployed from Falcon 9's upper stage a few minutes later, kicking off orbit raising and rendezvous operations. 17 hours and 19 minutes later, Dragon successfully docked with the ISS, making CRS-26's rendezvous the second fastest in SpaceX history and the fastest completed by a Cargo Dragon. Dragon docked to the ISS carrying more than three and a half tons of cargo, including one ton of crew supplies and one ton of science experiments. The single biggest payload, however, was the second of three sets of upgraded solar arrays that will eventually increase the total amount of power available to the ISS and its crew of international astronauts. Thanks to a new rollout solar array technology that allows each of the six planned arrays to roll up into a compact cylinder, NASA has been able to fit two arrays at once inside the unpressurized trunk section of SpaceX's Cargo Dragon spacecraft. Each pair of arrays weighs around 1.2 tons. SpaceX launched the first pair of iRosa arrays in June of 2021 and will likely launch the third and final pair in 2023. Combined, the six new iRosas will initially be able to produce up to 168 kilowatts, though NASA also says it will only use a maximum of 120 kilowatts. Including the station's old arrays, which will continue to be used in a limited capacity, the iRosa upgrade is expected to boost the total amount of power available for science and operations by 20 to 30 percent. CRS-26 was SpaceX's 54th launch of 2022, leaving the company just six launches away from hitting CEO Elon Musk's target of 60 launches this year. SpaceX has at least one more launch, a Japanese moon lander, that's scheduled before the end of the month. Out of the last eight months, only one has had less than five SpaceX launches, meaning that the odds are now firmly in favor of SpaceX achieving its goal. The Soviet Union's R-7 rocket family currently holds the record for most successful launches in a calendar year, with 61 launches completed in 1980. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.